There are many things that we do out of familiarity, even if those things do not serve us. We even go to the extent of justifying to say, this is how I was raised up. This is how my old man used to do it. This is how my mother used to do it. This is how my uncle used to do it. But the fundamental question is, are certain habits, thoughts, beliefs, is helping you to become the best version of yourself. And that's what I would like to unpack with you today. Let's look at the concept of unlearning. This is a very, very powerful concept. But before we dive into this concept of unlearning, I would like you to think about why we do things, even if those things do not serve us. You know, there's a saying that most young people, as they join organizations, say, and I have also experienced it as a younger person, where people will say, when you join a corporate, they say, we have always done things this way in this place. And it frustrates a lot of young people who want to bring ideas, who want to change circumstances, who wants to come with new suggestions, because there's someone who says, we have always done it this way. And what, what it simply means for me is that uh, we have always done it this way is that we are not about to change. We are afraid of what that change could bring. We are afraid of the new way of doing things because it is, to it is going to challenge us out of our core, out of what we have always known. And that is the point that I would like us to focus on to say at a personal level, like the people who do incorporate, are you also arguing in your mind to say, I have always done it this way. And as a result, there is no other way for me to look at that is going to take me to the next level. And I would like to maybe do this lesson focusing on the concept of the life wheel. When you look at the different aspects of your life and what you do on one aspect of your life, does it help the other aspect to flourish or does it derail the other aspect? And let me just give you a story um, before I dive into the life wheel. I was watching a program on television and this person, uh, these two people were about to get married. And before they get married, the producers take them to a counselor to talk about their life circumstances. What are the things that are going to help their marriage flourish? And what could be the derailers to their marriage? And they started speaking about the concept of money. And the gentleman was adamant that um, he does not believe in telling his wife, his girlfriend, uh, how much does he make in a month? And he was even saying, I'm going to, I believe in giving my woman a stipend. But for me, the, the, the response from the lady was powerful to say, how are we going to build our family? How are we going to do things that require money in this family? If you are not going to tell me how much you make, but also if I'm just going to rely on you giving me a stipend, will that stipend even suffice for some of the things that we want to do as a family in a month, for example? And um, the, the, the lady was open to say, this is how much I make. And um, let's put things on the table so that we can build a family. And when I listened to the gentleman, I found that it is because of the th thought patterns, the belief a system that he had, that he has probably seen in his family over a long time, that determined, he determined his approach to money, but also determined his habits and um, the actions that he take around money. And that's why I started to think about this thing and say, when you look at your wheel of life, and the things that you do in your career. What are those things that you do? The habits that you do? Um, uh, are you 
a type of person that stays, for example, at your job um, at, at, for, for extended hours, you taking work home, you taking um, work over the weekends. And if that is the case, how does your career, approach to career, impact your family? Does it take away from the time that you have in your family? Because that's what you believe a job should be. Even if um, you, there are family gatherings, you are not there because you believe that the career defines everything. And actually, I've got that situation close to me where one of um, the people closer to me is never there when we have uh, family gatherings because he believes that as a man, you've got to provide and you've got to always be um, in a work environment, looking at things that should be serving you um, to progress your career. It is the thought pattern that he has established. Um, he hasn't imbued a new way of looking at the career and balancing it, it with um, his family. Let's look at the, the concept of leisure as part of your wheel of life. Um, do you believe that you are a person that should prioritize yourself and do things because you are able to do them. You have money and that is going to serve you. I know a lot of people that would um, just be spending a lot of their time doing entertainment and forgetting that they've got other life aspects. So your approach to life, the things that you do as you think that you are entertaining yourself, are they serving other aspects of your life like your career? If it comes to having to go to work on a Monday and you find that you are tired because you have engaged so much into leisure, into activities um, that are taking away from your physical and your mental wellness, is it something that you're going to do, continue to do just because you believe that it serves you? But then how does it affect other areas of your life, like your family, like your finances and all of those things? So I'm just mentioning these examples because those are some of the habits. So those are some of the behaviors. When we look at some aspects, I'm not going to unpack the whole um, wheel of life that are affecting us as a people to take our lives, um, our lives forward. Let's go back to the issue of the gentleman that I was talking about in a marriage situation. Maybe, probably as he was um, alone, that type of habit would serve him. But the question is, as you enter into a relationship with someone, is that type of behavior going to serve you? So what I'm trying to bring to you today with this lesson is that it does not necessarily mean that uh, the way in which we have done things should remain the way we do things today and the way we will do things into the future. So it's because the things that we do, we have learned over time and we need to get to a space where we're saying we are unlearning the things that did not serve us in the past so that we can pick up new behaviors, new ways of thinking, new patterns that are going to assist us to take our lives to the next level and help us to integrate and create balance of our wheels of life. Look at your career, look at your family, look at your relationship, look at your finances, look at how you do leisure, look at your spirituality and all of these things combined and unpack, start to unpack each one of those areas and start to see which one of those areas is taken away from you that you think is building but then it starts to impact other areas of life. And then you start to see that some behaviors, some thought patterns, some habits in other areas of life are not necessarily saving the bigger picture that you want to achieve with your life. Let's just touch on how do we go forward from that perspective, which is the concept of unlearning. And what is unlearning? Uh, and learning is simply stepping out of the familiarity, the familiar. It's, it's about stepping out of the things that we know 
how best to do them because we believe that they saved us but actually they are not saving them, us so you start to do different things or you do things in a different way but then for you to be able to do things in a different way is going to challenge you because that is your third pattern that is something that you have been doing for such a long time and maybe it has even earned your accolades. It has even um, helped to move in your career. And maybe it has even been able to win you some of the relationship. But at the core of it, it's still not serving you. So you, you have to start to identify those things that you believe needs a change from a habit perspective so that you can deal with them. Every step of change starts with acknowledgement and identifying that which is not working. And even unlearning works that way, where you are going to identify what are these behaviors that are, that are not serving me? And in what way are they not serving me? In what way are they impacting the people that are closer to me? And what ramifications, what consequences are these things bringing into my life? And once you start to unpack them and, um, and, and, and start to understand what are those things, then you are able to move to the next step of the unlearning process, which is to learn and relearn the new behaviors that are going to replace the things that you have learned for such a long time. And don't get me wrong, it's not going to be an easy process because you have done this thing for a new time. And then having to find the new habits to replace the old ones is also not going to be easy because it starts with you changing your mental model of how you look at your life and what these new habits are going to assist you. Let's go to the example of um, the leisure. And if, if, if the way you entertain yourself, if your fun life is taking away from your career or from your family, you've got to find habits that are going to replace that. And let's make it granular. If the fun life meant going out and drinking with friends every week, um, maybe at a particular day in your life, in, in your life, then you have to start to say, how, what am I going to replace that time with? Is it about immersing myself in reading so that I grow myself? Is it about taking that time that I used to always go with my friends and go out with my family or with my partner? Or am I going to put a new habit of going to the gym at that particular time? So, because if you don't do that, you're going to create a vacuum. And with that vacuum, chances are that you're going to go to the old pattern and the old mental models will are going to find traction and start to create that vicious circle in your life of continuing with the habits that you know that are not serving you. Let's look at the third aspect from replacing the old behaviors, which is being open to learning. So I spoke about unlearn, and then the second one is about um, uh, 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 unlearning by, I mean, by, by relearning new habits. And then it's about learning. You learn from others. What are, who are, are, are people that you hold in high regard in your space? And are they doing the things that you believe you want and those things are saving them? But they are things that you would like to learn, but you don't know how to do. It's about time that you step to those people, those mentors, and start talking to them to say, how are you doing? How are you doing these things? Because people are open to share. People are open to share their life experience of to say, um, this is how I used to do things. This is how it used to, to be of disservice to me. But when I started to look at... Um, uh, 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 things differently, I started to be a different person. So learning from others is one of the best way in which you unlearn so that you can be able to learn new things um, in, in your life. You know, um, one of the things that I have um, seen that has helped me in particular to be able to change my old habits is to just to be curious. And, and that part of Curiosity is learning from others, but also 
deeping down into research and understanding the impact of these behaviors, but not only the impact of behaviors, the, the genesis of these behaviors and habits. Um, why am I doing the things that I'm, I'm doing? Because once you start to understand those, which goes to the first point that I spoke about, that curiosity starts to help you to think differently and to look at things from a different perspective. You cannot change what you don't understand. And by being curious to learn more about you and to learn why you do certain things, that is a way that helps you to start to do things differently. And, and, and part of this process also takes you moving yourself out of the, the zones that, you, that makes you comfortable. Uh, places, people, activities that makes you comfortable and you step away from those so that you can become a better person at a, at a particular point in time. I, I have written an article some years back and one of the things that have helped me to become a better person and to learn more about myself was the whole issue of moving away. Um, sorry for that. was to move away from my uh, hometown. And when I moved away from my hometown, I started meeting people from different cultures, meeting people from different terms, meeting people of a different thinking perspective. And just by interacting with these people, I started to challenge my thinking about how I used to do certain things. So there is really more power in challenging yourself to do things differently and to do different things, to adopt new habits in your life and, and replace the old habits and that helps you to develop new mental models. But also learning from others, mentors, by being curious yourself, delving into research and doing things that are going to help you. But also moving away from familiar spaces, familiar people, and learn from people that are diverse, um, of a diverse thinking, who looks at life differently. Those are some of the things that I would say that will help you to step away from habits that are not assisting you to grow as a person. I hope this lesson makes sense to you and you will take one or two um, uh, lessons and go implement them so that you start to change behaviors that are not serving you. My name is Butaki Shalele from Dreams Made Possible. Please subscribe on the link uh, above so that you can be part of this community and we can share knowledge and empower each other to become the better versions of ourselves. I thank you.